welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Yeah. I'm Barbara. I'm John. I'm Drew Saplin. Eric. <laughs> and I'm Barbara Dunkelman. All right. Do you let everybody know your full name just so they it's like... It's fun. I feel like everyone says your last name when they... It's You You yep. say my last name Drew a lot. Drew Saplin. Yeah, you do it because it's from Parks and Rec you said one time. It also is just... And it Perkins. rolls off the tongue so nicely. Drew yeah, Saplin. first Drew some, some people have to have it's the first name, last very name. very uncomfortable. <laughs> well, I was talking about this uh, with <laughs> Jordan Swears and some other people this weekend. Jordan Swears. Jordan Swears. There you go. Uh, well, if I said Jordan, we have multiple I mean 11, Jordan. Yeah, yeah there's, there's multiple Jordan. I was hanging out with Jordan there. Levin, and we were talking about first name, last name. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we were saying that there are just some celebrities where if you call them by like their first name, like that's crazy as shit. Yeah. Like, hey, what's up, Fred? Like, if I was talking like Fred Durst, and I just go like, what's up, Fred? Like, that's nuts. <laughs> or like, or like, um, like Brad. Yeah, like, see, people, people call like or like shortened versions of a person's name. Like yeah. people call William H Macy like Bill. Bill. Yeah. Or like Terry Matt, like oh, Terrence weird. Malick is like Terry. Yeah. Or like, uh, like Robert De Niro is Bob, and if you don't call him Bob, he gets mad. But also, I don't fucking know you. Right. How am I supposed to know that? Like, what are you talking about? You're right. Robert De Niro. That's your whole name. Right. What are you talking about? Say saying Niro. just Robert is yeah. weird. I'm yeah, exactly. Like, well, think of Joe Robert? Pesci is just Joe. Well, Joe. well he's also Crazy. a... Chris Kattan. He's, you want to say Chris Kattan's Kattan Kattan first and last name? <laughs> De Niro is not Chris? only a like last namer, but he's a middle initialer as well. Mm. Who? So, Robert De Niro. Oh, no, it's... De Niro's De Niro. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you know the classic <laughs> D <laughs> period. Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. Welcome to the Rich Teeth Podcast. We're about two minutes in. I think you're also... I was actually thinking about this today. De Niro. De Niro. Robert De Niro. I'm just gonna hang out here for the podcast. You thought his okay? name was Robert this is Nero? Robert D. De Nero. Nero. Yeah, but, that makes but sense. But you thought his name was Robert Nero. Wait, wait, so it's yeah. like there's like H, the, H, the, the, the there's H. Roman John Roman There's H. John Emperor. Benjamin. That's William H. Macy. William H. Macy. Uh-huh. Uh, and Robert D. Pat Nero. George R. R. Martin. Pat got two. <laughs> Patton G. Oswald. But, <laughs> what? <laughs> Everybody knows that. Yeah, of course. The weird one to me is uh, if, if you just say it without the middle name, Sarah Parker. Who the fuck is oh, that? Oh, that's I a, can't, Sarah I Jessica hard. Parker. I have such a hard time not calling Robert her Sarah, Downey. Sarah Jessica's yep. Parker's. <laughs> I always call her Sarah's Jessica's Parker. Sarah's, Sarah's Jessica's, Jessica's Parker. Parker. So many That's S's. a good one. That's Sarah's. Three name, a three-name celebrity. Bryce Dallas Howard, if she's just Bryce Howard. Oh, yeah. Doesn't That's weird. work. That's the weird. one that confuses me is Billie Eilish and her brother Phineas. Oh, is, their is last name? name, I think it's O'Connell. Oh. But I don't know mm. what Eilish what? is. Then why have I been calling him Phineas Eilish? Right? Phineas <laughs> Eilish. That's why he's not been answering your calls. Oh, no. Oh. Phineas Eilish. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> so uh, sorry. I, I had a realization of the day that I, I don't think it ever impacted me as much as I think it should that Madonna had the gall of making her stage yeah. name literally the name of the Virgin Mary. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Like, and then like everybody's been freaking because, out. About- because I'm not Catholic. Mm-hmm. Sure. And so I didn't grow up with that terminology of Madonna cause, right. because cause Protestant, like, right. uh, you know, like B- Baptists don't revere mm-hmm. Mary as much. And or so we dance. Or dance. <laughs> they worship. Is that right? Wasn't allowed in my college. Is that not her legal name? Huh? Madonna? Madonna? No, uh, no but it's her stage name. Stage yeah. name. Yeah. What's her name? I can't remember. Her name's Madonna. It's her legal first name. Oh, did she change name? it though? Oh. oh, her first name is Madonna? Yeah, Chicone. Well, then her parents had the gall of giving her. But, That's cool. But she, shit. but she went for making sure she is known by just yep. her first Madonna. name. Y'all have seen that TikTok of her this week, right? Oh, no, boy. Is she on TikTok? Oh, Bro. It is what is she terrifying. Do? I mean, she's just like. She just keeps moving close. You know, like when you give your dad a phone and he like moves it away so he can read it? Yeah. It's the opposite, <laughs> where she only gets closer until she's like. Yeah, you know when you, boy, when you give your dad your phone and you put a makeup filter on him and then hand him a handful of mushrooms? <laughs> yeah. It's like that, only it's Madonna. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a classic scenario. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, you know uh-huh. that all. It's definitely a thing by. where when you're rich for too long and away from, like, people and, like, you don't know what to do, so oh, but now 100%. you have a device that, like, allows you to, like, put something also, out. It's, oh, boy, you get scary results. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was thinking about, because I'm, I'm very much at this point, having been somebody the majority of my life who really loved award shows Mm -hmm. i really did i was i was that's crazy sure like i we threw oscar parties like that kind of thing i think i went to your house for an Oscar. yeah because i i i I really love like i love i love the movies and and i I loved that kind of thing but i'm realizing now i'm like i hate them Mm -hmm. and it's because the oscars used to be 
when we the only time we got to see these mm -hmm. people interact with each other. So yeah. seeing, you know, Brad, uh -huh. Mick, you know, uh, <laughs> it's Brad and Matt and Ben. Brad, Matt, yeah, and Ben. Seeing them Tom. together was Sturdy like Euro. amazing. And, he, and even the weird antics that happened, you oh, know, great. was the only time you saw their weird antics. Uh -huh. But now we're just inundated yeah. by celebrities having antics because on yeah. the talk shows and their TikTok accounts and that mm. kind of thing. It's like, I'm done. Uh, I think, did you tweet something about award shows about the I audience gonna, thing? I was gonna mention this because I, I watched the Grammys last Loved night. Loved it. Love that tweet. Uh, it was uh, Trevor Noah hosting. Uh, mm. Great host. I think he does a great job. They do that thing that I hate and love at award shows where the host hosts from the crowd. So they're like walking around. Mm. And there was one shot in particular, this is near the beginning of the show, where he was standing, the stage was behind him, but there were still tables also behind him facing the stage. Yeah. And the guy who plays, what's his face in, in uh, Captain America and Winter Soldier? Oh, Sebastian Stan. No, sorry. Chris Evans. Uh, Samuel Jackson. Scarlett Johansson. Why can't Johansson. I think of his name? Uh, the, the weird German guy that gets turned into a robot. The, the black guy who... Oh, uh, Falcon. Falcon. Oh my God, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Wow. I had a Robert De Niro Winter moment. Soldier and I didn't know who you were talking about. Oh, he's, 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 yeah. <laughs> sorry. From that show, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Got it. Uh, what's his name? My brain just just deleted it. it that, act, that actor's name. Uh -huh. He was f like, imagine Trevor Noah's behind me, uh -huh. and he's kind of like turning like this uh -huh. to where he like can't turn all the way in his chair. <laughs> oh, so to awkward. To face the camera, so the camera's just pointed at the back of his head, and you just see him like doing the like side yep. eye, kind of like trying to be in frame and like looking ahead and like looking behind because he doesn't know where to look. Best thing ever. I hate award shows. For the same reason, I hate the way that um, a lot of like live professional wrestling is produced now, where they have to cut to like reaction shots. Oh, and, sure. And I fucking hate the audience. Yeah. I don't want to look at them. <laughs> I don't want to see them. That's not what I'm here for. Anthony Mackie, sorry, Stop. it's gonna bother me. Anthony Stop Mackie. showing me oh, the I people agree. who are also watching this. I'm watching right. this. Yeah. I want to see the thing I well, want to watch. What even, what even broke that wall even worse for me was the day that I found out that, especially with award shows, mm -hmm. they're seeing the feed. Yeah. And so they're seeing themselves. Of course. So it's right. not a genuine reaction nope. at exactly. all. Exactly. Same thing. It's WrestleMania, the they're cam. showing, the oh, holding the up the a sign, cam. and then a guy going, oh! Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a kiss cam. The kiss cam. Yes, it from is. Every, from every it. sporting event. I hate it's it. always faked. I, I, like, Sorry the, to ruin everybody's fun, but the kiss cam for every sporting event. In between innings at a baseball game, show the kid doing the shoot dance from Fortnite. Sure. I don't care. That's great. But if I'm watching the baseball game, don't show don't. the audience who's also <laughs> watching the baseball game. I want to watch the baseball game. I hate it. What if it's the baseball's not happening at that moment? Don't though? want. Don't care. Want to watch the baseball game? Care. It's the same thing where when we were doing uh, uh, podcasts live from Sunset Room. Mm. Uh, I had like meetings about like, don't, I know we're going to have like the jib cam. Don't cut to the audience. I don't want to show the audience. You can show the back of their heads watching the thing, but you want as a viewer, Did I, you? if I'm, if I'm the one choosing what we're doing here, I don't want to see the audience. Did y'all mic the audience for that? For the Sunset Room stuff? Uh, I think they were semi so was there, like, I want to say there might've been a boom yeah. mic. Like yeah. A, there was like, like there was like, like you want cause like. As a as a person with a monkey's brain, uh -huh. like I want to hear other people laugh at the yes, jokes. I find fine. I'm fine with but hearing. I don't want to see. I don't want to see that. I don't want to try to make eye contact when Nicole Kidman threw a TV. Yeah, to, to like agree that we agree that something's funny. Show. I don't want to see the audience. I just don't ever want to see the audience. Yeah, they're there as a backdrop to the event that I'm watching. I'm not watching the event to also look at people who are watching the event. It is, it's just so, it's so funny whenever the host is in a crowd talking to the camera. Like, pretend I'm talking to this camera, mm -hmm. and then... Okay, I'll pretend you're talking to that camera. <laughs> if you could really picture it. And, like, if the host is here talking, mm -hmm. and I'm someone in the crowd going... <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> My, that's about right. Just a hot dog at a baseball to, game. Yes. They don't just know like, where to look. I'll take it. I'll, I'll take, take a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it to the next level. As an audience member, like growing up and going to a lot of like musical theater and, and stuff like that. Oh, I thought you were going to say like go, growing up and going to a lot of the Grammys. I, I, I really, yeah, man, I thought, I thought you were going to say Grammys, dude. I was so excited for you. Uh, whenever, well, okay, I'll say on even on, on like multiple levels. Whenever in the audience and 
the cast of the show comes out to the audience, I get really uncomfortable. Like, nope, you're supposed to yep. be up there, 100%. and I'm that. supposed yep. to be here. There's you, a there's a yep. big. They yep. literally yep. call it a wall. Yep. You don't they like literally it. call you it. You don't a wall. like it in theater when they come out of the audience and <laughs> like <laughs> like the Blue Man Group like walks. What I hate and even spits worse, marshmallows in your mouth. No, uh, what I hate even <laughs> worse is having been a performer in musical theater. Mm -hmm. Is when they tell you, all right, and this is when you guys are going to go in the audience and you're going to perform out in the aisles of like. No, again, I'm supposed to be I, detached from the people yeah, out I there. Like, I do like a good like surprise audience moment. No, where like, no. Where like like you're doing your musical theater, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, spotlight hits in the crowd, and there's like somebody, one person singing. Sure, sure. I don't want to. I don't want to have everybody. Don't come off the stage, and don't like <laughs> don't mingle with the crowd. Uh -uh. I don't need to. I don't need, need to hear. I don't need to, need to hear. I don't need to hear Shapoopy. It doesn't need to happen. It's even worse when it is a musical number and they go out to the crowd and then they just find their spot. No. <laughs> so you're like two feet from this person who's awkwardly trying to yep. sing Shapoopy. Right. You know, and you're like, honey, I'm fine if you go back yeah. up. <laughs> That's it. it uh, but pro wrestling, when it happens in the crowd, it's great because it never happens very long in front of you. Yeah, and right. someone gets oh, hit yeah. with a chair and then you go, fuck yeah, Nick Gage, kill that motherfucker. <laughs> and he comes up and he goes, yeah, MDK motherfucker. And then you fist bump him and then somebody bleeds and it's cool as Naturally. shit. I saw a TikTok today where it was like, I guess somebody, one of the jackass boys did some pro wrestling. Uh, Johnny Knoxville but, had a match at WrestleMania last okay, night. Isn't okay. he like 75? But, but like, no. <laughs> okay, so it's a, it's a Johnny Knoxville Not versus actually. whoever. Oh, yeah, same but, Johnny Knoxville. but it was... But it was clearly Chris Pontius in the ring. So, okay. And so, like, I, I got very upset. So, Johnny and, like, Knoxville. Yelled, yelled like an old man at my TikTok screen, like, don't you kids know who Johnny Knoxville is? It's clearly Chris Pontius. Since Jackass he's Forever 51. came out. Yeah, he's, he's not He's not he's that like, old. He's, like, almost a yeah. grandpa. I mean, was, I feel like, uh, it feels like he's 75 well, it's doing the, those the, kinds of stuff. It's the kids, right? white, white hair. Yeah, it's it's, right. it's yeah. those Steve Martin. So, uh, he, <laughs> when Jackass Forever was coming out, they're like, oh, we'll promote it to who Who are all the other chuckleheads who will watch this shit? It's pro wrestling fans. So he'll go do a thing at Royal Rumble in January. So he shows up at Royal Rumble, and he's dressed like Andy Kaufman. He gets, you know, he's throwing someone over and toss him over the top rope, whatever. I guess he liked doing it so much. Sure. They're, they're like, do you want to have a match at WrestleMania? And they went, absolutely. This guy, Sami Zayn, has been a pro wrestler for 20 years or whatever. I was watching him in, like, 2004. Uh he had a match with Johnny Knoxville, and it was this no holds barred, whatever. So everyone else in Jackass was also involved. Uh, Chris Pontius was there, and he did the the Party Boy stuff. And Wee Man started beating up Sami Zayn, and then gave him like a scoop slam, like like Hulk Hogan <laughs> like slamming Andre the Giant. It was awesome. Sami Zayn lost the match after getting hit with the giant hand oh, very from good. Jackass, and then getting caught in oh a giant God. human sized mouse that's, trap. That's the that's the best. <laughs> That's the best joke of all time on Jackass is the giant hand. Oh, yeah. That's my favorite stunt. Hey, it was great. When he hits him, it was Aaron's carrying the soup, and it fucking hits him. <laughs> yeah. He fell for the soup. It's so good. There's a there's Johnny Knoxville genuine laugh. Oh, yeah. Oh. Especially in that one. Mm -hmm. And and the soup, because the soup, because he like I, I have Amazing. a I have a visual memory of him doing this kind of hand, you know, pull, he's he's pulling himself yeah. in. He's so laughing. His laugh Perfect. is is all the audience I need for that yeah. show. Oh, yeah. It's, it's great. so great. I, I, it really is the dumbest shit ever. There's, yeah. it, it, but it tickles a part of my brain that I, I don't think, I, I, I actually had this realization the other day as like, I don't know if anybody's like me, I don't, I write and delete tweets constantly. Oh, yeah. Because um, I try not to use social media very much anymore, and I definitely just don't like to tweet very much anymore. And so I write and I delete stuff. Um, but often I write and delete Scratches stuff. Scratches that itch. It does. It gets a little bit. I, I feel lately I'm like, should I have matured past certain kinds of humor? Because I feel dumb. I think it's because yeah. I... You know who directed You know who directed all those jackasses? Spike Jones. Yeah. One of the most brilliant auteurs of all time. Mm -hmm. I think what it is is that like... Doing as my jokes. As my kids <laughs> age, because mm -hmm. I'm a dad who has older sure. kids, I feel even older and I feel like I should have matured. <clears throat> but then at the same time, I still think that humor is funny. Yeah. And so I have conflicting emotions about it. It's uh, it's slapstick. Slapstick's always funny. It's always funny. It's the easiest. Kids, it's just like the easiest thing. <laughs> what is it? Letterkenny quote: "Kids falling off bikes will never not be funny." <laughs> <laughs> we we were talking about the passage of time today because, if you don't mind me mentioning this, we we had a recording earlier, and you had like mentioned that like you would come out when you were thirty, mm -hmm. and I was like, that was seven years ago. Mm -hmm. The last two years don't Holy count. Holy I, I can't. I can't argue that the last two years count at all yeah. in any way, shape, or form. They like, really shouldn't. Because, like, yeah, oh, I've worked. I've worked at Rooster Teeth for two years. Mm. Nope, I've worked at Rooster Teeth for five years. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, huh? 
Huh? Well, I just got here. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. even I was thinking, Eric, too, I think you've been here for five years now. Yeah, yeah, 2017, I Same. think. Which, yeah, it, yeah. that feels Blood like you've been here. five years ago. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. That's mm-hmm. disgusting. Right. That That's not true. That doesn't feel true. I yeah. hate that. And then, like, somebody <laughs> the other day was saying, like, once you, like, up until your 30s, days last longer than weeks. This is a weird one. And then once you hit, like, 30, 31, uh, days go by like that. And then the weeks last much longer. Like yeah. it's a weird, like oh, reversey kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And like once I like once somebody gave me that logic, I was like, oh okay. Which makes uh, I'm I'm trying to do like diet and exercise a little bit more. Makes that a lot easier in your 30s because you're just like, fuck it, I'll I'll do this for 10 minutes and it'll feel like, you know, I can do it for an hour and it'll feel like 10 minutes. Yeah, the day's gonna go right by me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and it's and it's just I remember going to a basketball game with my grandpa when I was probably like 18, eh, maybe like 17, and. Uh, he goes to SDSU basketball game, San Diego State, and he's like a big supporter. And I just remember driving in his truck with him to the basketball game, and he re- and he just looks at me and he goes, I remember when you were born. And I, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I went, what? what? Great. <laughs> and, and he's just like, feels like yesterday. Wasn't. And I yeah. went, cool. Hell yeah. Grandpa's a cool guy. <laughs> nice. I, I feel like I'm going down dangerous paths a lot more lately of really – I guess uh, sometimes he glorifying and pining over nostalgia and the the good old days. Mm-hmm. But my good old days is just like like I was thinking back. It's like I remember when I would just fill my day by walking over to the local Taco Bell, getting a, a Mexican <laughs> pizza and a steak quesadilla, and then going over to the movie theater and seeing Independence Day, <laughs> and not having to worry about having any sort of tums. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. yeah. Going like on you at all. And then maybe on the way back home, I'll walk by the candy shop that also sells Pokemon cards, and I'll get both. <laughs> <laughs> but, but at, the same, at the same time, I'm only doing the shit that I wanted to do when I was 12, this, but now. But, so, so like, like, he, I, like, to me, the passage of time is like, this is negligible. I don't fucking care because I'm making luchador masks and playing video games and I own a house. Like, I can do whatever I want. So I don't have kids. I don't have, like, real responsibilities. I can take myself out the game. Like, it's like, no, there's no longevity. There's nothing. And I'm just doing all the cool shit I always wanted to do anyway. That was that was the realization. Like, this last weekend we went to the Ren Fair. Yeah. And, like, this is the first <laughs> yeah. time. Hell yeah. The, hell yeah. It was great. And this is the first time, because I've been to a couple of Ren Fairs, but I was, like, in my early 20s or, like, a teenager, and I always had, like, a $20 bill yes. from my mom yep. and dad. And this time I was like, it, it's both a blessing and a curse because I went to the Ren Fair and I was like, I can buy any fucking sword that I want, yep. but I don't want the swords anymore. And it's like, God, like that's the. It's like now I'm older. I have money. Like I have money. You have, you have the shit. money, yeah. but you have the responsibility thing where you're like, What am I gonna do with the sword? Exactly. I gotta so, find a place in my house to put the sword. Oh, all right. But you have to find the things. I think I was talking to some of the the other producers about this because I'm like, you guys like <laughs> the feedback that I gave to everyone this year was like, Hey, you don't take enough time off across the board take more time off sure. whatever you have to do take time off as soon as you get back from time off put your next time off in because you need things to look forward to otherwise you'll get ground down to fucking nothing yeah. so like keep point- putting time off in so irresponsibly i i'm going with friends but i bought tickets to go to vegas at the end of may it's memorial day weekend Are you a big vegas fan no okay. but uh <laughs> there is a pro wrestling show that's happening that way aew is doing a big show then so it's like fuck i haven't had a vacation in forever go there for like that big weekend, go spend way too much money to stay there, to drink there, to eat there, to have too much, whatever. But like, I, I can do, I can do that. I have yeah. the means yeah. and, and also, I just won't have, have to do it all the time. Vacation. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's that. So it's like, just put Which your time. So now you need to be utilizing more. <laughs> yeah. But now I have that thing where I'm like, okay, well that's the time off that I'm taking. Yeah. I just got done with the live show that we did on Friday. So like that was the goalpost that I was trying to hit. Now I hit that. Now I'm on the other side of it. Now I have to have the next thing that I'm looking looking forward to, and it's this at like the end of May. Well, because that's how we were like how everything else works until you get turned out into the real world. Yes. Where it's like everything is benchmarked. You have a semester, you have summertime, you that's have absolutely go true. back to school, yep. and then like once you're turned out into the real world, it's like now you have big lake. Like you just have <laughs> expanse of water I, you that you just have to like look out into yeah. and be like, oh great, ten years have passed yep. and I've not paddled the boat do any you think further. That's one of the reasons why, obviously amongst many, one of the reasons why the pandemic and that time period was so abysmal because there were no benchmarks. There's no yes. benchmarks. You 100%. had nothing to yeah. look forward to. You had nothing to plan. You had nothing to do in a sense. It, nowhere to go. And there was absolutely. just like essentially this abyss of nothingness as far as the eye could see. I hadn't thought of it that way, but I think you're right because I couldn't, people were like, yeah, let's do like friend Zoom calls. And I'm like, yeah, I can't imagine a life where I look forward to that. I'm sorry. Right. Like, I, It's like not for me. Like I can't I'm on a computer all day for work, and then it's like, hey, check this out. 
sit at a computer hey, a little look bit at longer, this screen. but look at some different people. And I'm like, yeah, jump off a yeah, building. And don't you take fucking notes. got it. <laughs> like, no. But I think you're right. Like, no, if you have like no go, no goalposts or like no benchmarks, things that you're like driving toward, you just sort of go, oh, what happened? It's January. Okay. Oh, shit. It's June. Every right. day was the same. <clears throat> yeah. It's you get up, you do the exact same thing, you do the exact same meetings. Yeah. You do the same thing at night, and then you go to sleep, and then you wake up. And yeah, you just have to have I, things to look forward to. I think like. that's why we have such big memories of the freeze. I think, like, the freeze had we... Oh, like, interesting. Like, had we been at work, and then, like, all of a sudden, power went out, and we were out for a week, and it was yeah. like, oh, that's shitty, but everybody kind of works together, and you're able to see other people. We wouldn't have such big memories of, like, man, that sucked extra hard. Because it like, was a thing. Right. Mm-hmm. On top and, of a thing. <laughs> well, it was also the only thing that had happened for a year. It's a very where, good point. Where it's just like, yeah. cool, I can't make my bread. It's too cold out. I, <laughs> I can't make my bread. I can't make my sourdough. <laughs> Mama mia. <laughs> Mama, Mama mia. Papa pia. Baby's got the diarrhea. <laughs> I think I figured out how I know I'm getting old. Uh-huh. Is. I just love the notes that I'm sure we're going to be getting about this podcast. It's like we need to be uh, attracting the younger demographic with you guys' conversation. I've said TikTok, I've said oh, TikTok no. six times. Uh, I think uh, the Eric RT podcast. <laughs> RT podcast. I don't think we're attracting any new people yeah, yeah. to the show. Yeah. You're in, baby. And you're hey. not getting out. Yeah, you, you come in, you stay here. Buckle forever. in. Uh, it's when I watch things like kids falling off bicycles, people <laughs> getting hurt. 10% of the time, I'll laugh and enjoy mm-hmm. it. Now, 90% of the time, I go, oh, oh, God, oh, no. Oh, that looks like it hurt. Like, yeah. I'm too sensitive now. Yeah. And I'm doing the mom thing of just like, oh, it's, uh, he's got to go to the hospital now. he got to do this. And I'm like, I used to just laugh at everything. Yeah, hell yeah. My mother now still, <laughs> shout out Deanna, maniacally laughs anytime anybody gets hurt, especially her children. Uh, it is her, like, especially her children. Espe- like, Anytime we got hurt growing up, it was the funniest thing to her. <laughs> and I knew she was worried about us, but she just couldn't help it. She's like, that was very funny what you did. And I was like, I'm bleeding. She's like, I know, but I can't stop laughing. Yeah, there's a I reason why they show compilations of that stuff at a Buffalo Wild Wings. Right. You know what I mean? Like On Chive TV? Yeah. <laughs> I'm watching B Dub's TV. I'm eating my Asian Zing wings. <laughs> I'm drinking a 32 ounce beer, and I'm watching somebody get hit in the nards. I just want to lose just a little bit of my empathy to enjoy those things. A yeah, bit. sure. Yeah, because I'm. It's a compilation video. I'm sure everyone's fine. Yeah, everyone's fine. The only I can't, thing I can't separate. I'm sure everyone's fine. <laughs> not I, cut to the narrator. Everyone was <laughs> not. <laughs> like, like that's Person's what I've learned is that a lot of those like videos it. they cut at the appropriate time. Sure, yeah. You don't want to see what happens after the cut. Uh-huh. Yeah. Very true. Because then you definitely won't be cut. laughing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine with that. You just have to be nice to dogs. I think as long as you're nice to right. dogs and everything else is fine. <laughs> I don't care if people like get, yeah, you hit by a car. It's like, oh, that's funny. Whatever. Just be nice to dogs. Just be nice to dogs. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy. <laughs> Easy for me. This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by me, Undies. Imagine this scented candles, soothing spa music, a warm but not too hot cup of green tea, a fresh pair of comfy undies. These are all important aspects of practicing self-care. Look, you know how we feel about me undies here. You hear, you hear Gus talk about them all the time, but now you get to hear me talk about them. I love talking about them because I love the way they fit me. I love the patterns and I love the company. I'm a me undies guy, and so is Gus, clearly. Sometimes it can feel challenging to take care of yourself in the way you deserve, which is why me undies membership was designed to make your life easier. With free shipping and returns on every order, savings on virtually everything they make, exclusive sales and early access to their newest stuff, it's the ultimate way to ensure you start off every day in total comfy bliss. They've got sizes available from extra small to 4XL. Plus, with new prints dropping monthly, there's always something new to try. Get super soft undies, bralettes, or socks shipped right to your door and live a more comfortable life. Me Undies has a great offer for you, the person watching or listening to this right now. For any first time purchaser, you get 15% off. For a limited time, if you sign up for their free to join Me Undies membership, you get 25% off your first membership item. To get 25% off your first membership item or 15% off your first order and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. That's MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. Thanks, MeUndies. Feeling fine. This episode of the Rooster Teeth podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Making websites on your own is hard. And there are so many awful website building platforms out there with limited features that make ugly, poorly optimized sites. 
Luckily for you, Squarespace is the go-to all-in-one platform to build beautiful online presences or run your business. Squarespace seriously has everything you need to build a website that suits your needs from small businesses to content creators. I said it because it's bigger. They've got member areas so you can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content, even a video studio app that can help you share and engage with your audience. Interested in building a community? Squarespace also offers blogging and commenting features, so you can create a community through threaded comments, replies, and likes. It's a thumbs up. Plus, they have a traffic overview feature so you can actually see who's in your community and how much your community's grown. You've heard us talk about Squarespace on this show for a long time. I appreciate how super simple it is to you. Everything's point and click. No coding required. I'm not a very smart guy and I'm just clicking around on the screen. I'm figuring out Squarespace boom like that with its great templates. You can get up and running in no time. I love it. You should give it a try. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you go to squarespace.com slash roosterteeth to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks, Squarespace. This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by DoorDash. You've got back-to-back meetings. I definitely have those. Errands to run, I have those also. And chores to take care of, they never end. What's the secret to clearing your to-do list? A little help from DoorDash. You can get dinner, household essentials, and everything on your grocery list delivered. DoorDash is easy to use, has pretty much everything I need to get me what I need when I'm on the go. If I'm in a pinch and my tummy's rumbling, I got DoorDash on my side. They're there for me, and that's why I use DoorDash. They get what you want to eat right now delivered to your door, and along with the restaurants you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered from DoorDash. Get drinks, get snacks, get other household items in under one hour. Are you craving late-night ice cream like Chris? Boom, you get it. Did you forget the key ingredient for dinner like ice cream like Chris? Boom, you got it. Or maybe you just need to stock up for the week on ice cream like Chris. It's all in their easy-to-use app with over 300,000 partners. You can support your local neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, like Chipotle, like Cheesecake Factory. Ordering is easy and your items will be left safely outside your door if you choose contactless delivery drop-off. Nailed it. For a limited time, our listeners get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when they download the DoorDash app and enter the code ROOSTER. It's 25% off, up to a value of $10 and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app from the App Store and enter code ROOSTER. Don't forget, that is code ROOSTER for 25% off your order with DoorDash. Subject change, terms apply. Hi, Barbara. DoorDash Reload Tuesday! Uh... What should we do for the next set? Uh, I want to find a way to have a set where we are not slumped back in chairs. Mm-hmm. I want it to be more like engaged, up stools? and engaged, just like, four stools, or yeah. like even like a bar height top thing, or like stand. You want like you could, a standing show? Wait, not standing, but you could like sit on a on a seat that's high enough. Or if you want to stand and kind of move around, could a little. we? Could we do kind of like off topics setup? Yeah, not what the exact if, same. Yep, you just had four treadmills facing each other <laughs> like okay go, that's a okay, totally go different video. kind yeah. of show yeah and what a crazy show what a way that to get be. gus off the podcast forever yes. right yeah i but i i made a joke about that today on twitter that i realized after a recent video we filmed in the park for easter that we have <laughs> multiple times now like i think four times now tricked gus into doing strenuous physical activity <laughs> he's always down though he yeah, is down funny. but it isn't until like i think in the middle of these things that he regrets the saying yes that he's very good at doing because like we've already released the are you fitter than a fifth grader video right. where, like i saw gus do push-ups didn't think yeah. i'd see that in my lifetime <laughs> i like we use that term loosely <laughs> I, I made fun of his push-up forms in the video good. because it was less like there first. was less pushing and more just like his hips thrusting into the ground <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Just like that swinging He's, motion. Gus only got one speed. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing for the new set uh-huh. for the R2 podcast. Yeah. Uh, some way where people have the inability to have a laptop. You don't want Gus to have a laptop? I hate I hate it. 
Why? Because I feel like he's distracted away from our beautiful conversation. That's how I communicate with him to go, hey, you need to promote RTX at rtxevent.com July 1st through 3rd. That's Get your tickets now. That's And then I tell him, say that, and then a lower third pops up. Yeah, that's so that's the only way I can do that. I I also like the, I like the, the laptop because I like to spit bullshit facts and every once in a while he'll be like you're wrong and I'll be like, <laughs> oh, right. and I guess from a fact checking perspective it is yeah. nice to have mm-hmm. I just you know otherwise I have to text him and then he looks at his watch and he just hits the okay button <laughs> it just goes okay that was Friday at the live show I just kept going yeah, it worked next out person next person <laughs> well that's uh, what you're talking about with like uh, distractions that's why I'm glad we're about one week away from finally f- first time getting Sneaky Dragon in in a studio. Oh, um, ever? Yeah, no. We've only ever done that show remotely. Yeah, it's, it's remote. We we did we did a a live show for RTX, well, RTX mm-hmm. a little one shot, and that was the first, only time we've ever played D and D together. Yep. Um, that crazy live. And That's so nuts. I'm glad to get everybody in the office because I need everybody to get away from Slack yep. while we're recording stuff. Yep. <laughs> I yeah, that's it. that's been my trouble with recording at home is like. As much as I want to focus on something, I'll still get hit up. And because I don't want anyone else's day to be mm-hmm. delayed because of me, I feel obligated to answer people right mm-hmm. away, even if I'm in a recording. You're nuts. And I am nuts. That's you. But you, you're also hey, really, you're no, no. also really prompt. I, I, I am very prompt because I, I do my best to do my due diligence at work. Unfortunately for people who are messaging you, you, I, this sucks and it's hard to hear. Sometimes you have to make content in order for people to have meetings sure. to talk about the content that we have to make. <laughs> and I know that might be hard to stomach. I know that's tough. <laughs> but um, who are you talking? You're doing? I just want to know who you're Occasionally talking. Yeah, we have to make stuff, shows, sure. and videos. And that might be tough <laughs> when people are messaging you and trying to get a reply. I know. But we have to make the content in order for people to have meetings to talk about But here's the, the problem, Eric. Uh-huh. I. <laughs> this is going a different direction <laughs> yeah, than we yeah, were. Uh-huh. <laughs> we're, we're, we're <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to hear what the problem is. We were talking about WrestleMania and it's yeah. gone yeah. here. It's the problem. Uh-huh. I uh-huh. am a people pleaser. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw my phone light up with a Slack right now. What are you yeah. doing? It's yeah. Cody! <laughs> Wait, Cody, no! I really said, don't look at this. You're on the RTP. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, you really have to. I learned that in the pandemic was you have to sort of, and, and I learned it from Patrick too, where he was just like, when I'm doing this thing, when I have like this kind of meeting or, or whatever, I close Slack because I'll get to it. But the thing that has to be most important is the thing that I'm doing right here, because in order for everything else to work, this thing has to work and I have to give that my attention and then the rest. And if, if people are pissed about that, I, I fuck you. I don't know. Like, no, I what, mean, you're very Who's right. going to tell me, Eric, I'm mad at you because you didn't reply on Slack. I dare you fucking do it i don't know <laughs> like who's gonna do that no one no I'm, one you don't have the well guts. i'm doing Eric, that you don't i'm have doing the that i'm doing that guts. this week you I'm, don't have the it's fucking happening. guts yeah what is this a production company yeah. <laughs> uh, i i i you know how sometimes when like uh, everybody here use tiktok you use tiktok yeah sure a little bit yeah why not okay so a big thing about tiktok is that the algorithm really figures out who you are and really can like tell on you uh-huh. a lot 100%. sure um by showing you content that is just so narrowly focused on you mm-hmm. that it's telling. And so TikTok has learned that I'm also people pleaser, um, which I've talked about uh, extensively with my therapist, and we've got made no progress in fixing it so far. Um, but uh, someone, you know, sometimes when people say something in a very succinct but thoughtful way, it can really stick with you. TikTok was sent to me that was someone saying that um, there is an attribute about people that we often covet but don't achieve and that's compassion it's a very hard attribute to get you know compassion and we feel involves a lot of you know intent and 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 you know energy in order to achieve it but this person challenged me with the idea that the most compassionate people are those who have boundaries and that by setting boundaries you're you're able to actually be able to, um, you know, you don't give yourself so much that you're not, you know, uh, helping someone else or you're not, you're not even helping yourself at all. Yeah. You're also a, communicating expectations so that people know that you're doing the thing that you can. Right. So it's like, yeah, from a place of compassion where it's like, oh, hey, I'm going to tell you what my boundary is so that when I actually do help you or I am being helpful or whatever I'm, whatever you're getting from me. You know that that's genuine. <laughs> yeah, and 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 like something that. that I often <laughs> translate incorrectly that I have to remind myself is that boundaries don't mean don't necessarily mean rudeness. 
See, something that I'm hyper aware of and terrified of is being labeled as a bitch or as a diva. I think especially because, you know, we're some of the people who appear on camera for Rooster Teeth Mm -hmm. that I think oftentimes people might get the idea that you're above things or, you know, not willing to put in the extra work because, you know, we do this stuff as well. Well, And so I never want to give anyone that perception of me that I always want to help wherever I can. And so I tend to overextend myself because I want to be available and helpful to everything. Mm -hmm. But the way that you communicate, something I've always really valued about talking to you about just the branding in general, especially your brand, is you're really good about communicating what your brand is and how to make that happen to where it's like, that's always been, and I've given that note, having, having like worked with you enough to other people who are up and coming, being like, hey, I work with them, and they'll be like almost too easy to work with or like too accommodating mm-hmm. and sacrifice their image or their brand in order to accommodate what we're trying to make. And I've given them the note, be like, hey, Barbara's really good at just being like, hey, this is our brand, and this is what we're trying to achieve. Let me help you get to where we need to go. And yeah. it's like, I think it's a very valuable asset. And you do, you're not, I've never had a moment where I've been like, oh, diva moment. It's always been like, oh, she's just communicating what she knows is important for either your personal brand or the brand that you run. Mm-hmm. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. I'm going to start being a bitch, though. Yeah, that's right. I was going to say, uh, con- <coughs> conversely, I retweeted a tweet that just said, great time to be a hater. Many people suck and most things are stupid. And I feel, <laughs> feel really good about that one. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's really... Do you think stuff sucks more now or do you think it's always sucked and we just have way more ways of communicating it? I think it's that. I think, I think, I think I'm think i inundated with more things that suck more constantly. I also think I'm inundated with more things that are great constantly. Where mm-hmm. it's just like... And I think there, I think there are, I don't see a lot of great things day to day. Well, no, it's just like... Ex- like, ex- like crazy things like oh here's a trip to Cozumel that I did a backflip at and I was like I can't do a backflip and I can't afford a trip to Cozumel mm. I'm a piece of shit uh, everything <laughs> sucks yeah. uh, see I don't have that <laughs> I don't know you I don't do, I don't you can do at, a backflip and yeah, you, you have I don't I don't look at people going like oh we, I went on this crazy trip or whatever I'm like I gotta do that I don't fucking give a fuck what I do what other people do I don't give a shit Man. it's like that doesn't matter it doesn't I only matter. I do I do math on directors all the time like I'll watch a movie and be like how old was he when he made this and you're that's the craziest thing why like, why are you, you trying to like go nuts? To oh, that? all the time. Every You're a of every maniac. Day. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you knew this. Who? Who? What? Uh, who cares? What are you doing? I gotta. We gotta get there. I gotta go. Like I gotta. Who? I gotta, I gotta Who's we? To I gotta go. <laughs> I'm gonna die soon, Eric. We have to get things done. There's yeah. not. There's nothing to do. You just do the thing that you're doing. It's the thing where because now you're gonna remember this moment in ten years or sure. whatever, and where it's like. You remember when you were 23 and you're like, oh, man, am I too old to do anything? Think sure. about a 23-year-old coming up to you now and going, like, am I too old? <laughs> See? Too old See? Old. Dipshit. Right. So fucking don't worry about it. Yeah. That, like, you got to stop, stop thinking about time as, like, a start and an end point. Yeah, it's a flat circle. And, like, you're, like, somewhere here. Oh. Time goes through you. <laughs> like, that's it. Like, yeah. you only exist presently. And so, like, that's things true. just come through you. That's awesome. This episode of the Joe Rogan Podcast <laughs> is brought to you by Me Undies. <laughs> You're talking about NFTs or uh, uh, elk meat? <laughs> the oh, our you know our security guard does power lifting and I thought like, you were gonna str- say NFTs. Str- <laughs> no, 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 no. You said you said Atlas elk or stones. whatever. He eats two pounds of bison a day. Whoa, a day? Dude. A day? Here's the thing. I want to be a bison rancher so bad. What? And, like, I don't even know. Is a bison a buffalo? Yeah, a uh, bison's a buffalo, and it's just like. I, and I was trying to, like, Max Kromke, who used to work here a long time ago, he yeah, raises yeah. cattle. Yeah. And I was like, Max. He makes the best TikToks. And, I, and mm-hmm. I was like, yo, let me buy a buffalo and put it on your land. And he was like, absolutely not. And I was like, why? Like, why? They're very destructive, apparently. Oh, and are you have they? To, you have to, like, reinforce all your fences. Anyway, if... Bison. I don't know who... Huh. I, if, uh, if anybody's looking to go into the bison business, I'm interested. Willing to invest <laughs> at least a bison and a half. Who's the who's the billionaire that has the bison farm? RuPaul. M. Bison. Nope. It's one of, like, the tycoons. Like, uh, like Turner or somebody. M. Bison. <laughs> he also has a bison Thanks, like restaurant Ted, chain. Ted, Ted Turner? Oh, really? It, it might be know. like Ted Turner. What Ted th- Turner's bison restaurant. <laughs> Ted, you want to go to Ted Turner's no. bison restaurant? <laughs> it's it is that it is like you make a joke. It's, it's on just, that level of absurd. It's just a TGI that this Friday. person has. <laughs> Someone in chat, help me that there is a bison restaurant that the bison. It's named after like one of those billionaires. <laughs> It's named after one of them. Welcome to Elon Musk's bison it is. factory. It's on that level. 
It's uh, good burgers, sh- though. Should we ask Mr. Nero what he thinks? Oh, that's what Mr. Nero. Bobby oh. D. Oh, Bobby D. Bobby <laughs> D. <laughs> <laughs> Ted Turner's Bison Restaurant. It's fucking hilarious. You you say, uh, oh, shit. Oh, the best fuck, bison dude. burger. Somebody in chat said Turner has some bison. It might be. <laughs> I'm sure, sure it is. I gotta it's just look outside it up of Atlanta. <laughs> look. And he's got all of these bison. I, it's, I, no, you, Billionaire no. with bison. I, in oh. Georgia, I went to the restaurant, so it's in Georgia. Yeah, really? no, then it's definitely Turner. Georgia. Ted, Ted, Ted Turner's bison. Ted's Montana Grill. Oh, that's what no it way. is. <laughs> I, you laugh, but that's the thing. It's Ted's Montana it's, Grill. It's in Georgia. See, <laughs> we don't need laptops. We it have is. chat. Citizen oh. Turner, billionaire makes oh. home in Montana where the buffalo can roam, and it's Ted Turner in a cowboy hat. I told oh, you. Oh, that's so cool. I need more billionaires in cowboy hats. Has oh, Elon Musk done a, has he done a cowboy hat uh, feature uh, I need. No, I don't think so. He used How? to own WCW, but then he sold it, but now he has bison. That's How, awesome. How did you find out that the a security guard is a power lifter and he started of following me on Instagram and then I, I noticed I'm like oh it's fine oh and then so I came in and I talked to him today and he was like I, I'm just like so do you like power lift what the fuck and then he was like oh yeah I do like strongman competitions he's I think 24 Dude. and he's like I do strongman competitions and he's telling me about like his uh like the lifts that he's doing or whatever he said that his goal <laughs> for the end of the year is to deadlift 700 pounds He's like, oh but but I might have to reevaluate it because just yesterday I, I deadlifted 650 and he showed me the video and it's him powerlifting in socks. <laughs> and he just lifts. Yeah, you want flat he feet. He lifts 650 pounds. And I'm like, Sock seems dangerous though. That's slippery. Yeah, slippery. Yeah. You're fucking crazy. So he lifts. I'm like, converse. and I just went, How, what's your calorie intake for the, for like a day? He went, oh, I don't know. Like, he's like, I have a nutritionist, but I ha- we haven't like worked out the calories. But I eat like four cups of broccoli. I eat like two cups of rice. I eat, Two pounds of bison meat, and I went, hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> two, pounds. two pounds of <laughs> bison meat. How many ounces is that? Oh, 32? 32 ounces. 16, 16 ounces yeah. in a pound? I, yep. I, I can't even make it through a six-ounce steak. Right, right, right. right. But what if it was two pounds of bison? Two pounds of bison. <laughs> so what, what if you just had all these bison? That's also like... So expensive. Yes, right. bison but, is... but it's. I think it's really good for you. Like, oh, bison's extremely. Oh, but it's like, it, uh, uh, maybe other people here know. I'm thinking we got freaks in the broadcast zone. Um, is breast milk breast milk really good for like like powerlifting and like guys who are like uh-huh. looking for like super nutrition? I mean, I mean, it's calorically dense, but not. But like like human breast milk. Human well, breast milk a, yeah. doesn't, doesn't have a ton of fat in it. Like if you're if you're looking for like. Caloric density. You uh-huh. want to go for like a. I'm not sure if that's what they're looking. For. I know like fuck all about like breast milk. El- to be elephant honest. milk's where it's at. What elephant? Milk? Elephant yeah, milk? elephant milk is where you want to. It's your like most calorically. You dense. go. What animal do I want to look like? Why do I fucking know how what the most caloric? Don't know, man. Calorically dense milk is. That's a, a question. Why is that fact for... rattling around in my head? Okay, let's you know see. Bodybuilder breast milk. What should we do? Don't, sorry. Don't say try all the different milks. No, no, no. So sorry. <laughs> I do a milk show. <laughs> when I don't even like milk. <laughs> we'll call it the I milk do a show. milk. A milk so, show. Drew, Drew, we're we're starting the milk show. I hope you know. On. We're starting the milk I show. I welcome the milk show. I'm Drew and I hate milk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. We're making a social series that is called I'm the milk Ted show. I'm Ted Turner and I hate bison. <laughs> Ten second clips. <laughs> the, milk, the milk show. <laughs> I'm writing this down because I want to make it. It's going in my mouth, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, our bodybuilder. Okay, the, it is a thing. Some guys could probably rationalize. rationalize okay, well, so, uh, the popularity of steroids, but most importantly, there's just no evidence to suggest that breast milk is a magic muscle builder. But there are. It's bodybuilder forums talking about breast milk. This is awesome. <clears throat> yeah, show. new mom side hustle: selling extra breast milk to bodybuilders. That's Ooh. from 2020. Oh God! We gotta do a milk show. <laughs> it's gonna be called the milk show. The milk show. What um, the milk show? We should definitely do a milk show. Uh, <laughs> you were gonna mention something about. I sorry. So, uh, I, I my brain was connecting a few dots as you were talking about certain topics. That's exciting. About like you were talking about like you know milk and its <laughs> nutritional value mm. and that kind of thing and, and talking about calorically dense and that kind of thing. And the, you know the, uh-huh. the, the bison. There is a. Have you guys ever uh, bought a a perfect bar? Uh, those little peanut butter bars that they sometimes sell in like yeah. shops. Yeah, yeah. So they're these. They're about this big. They're not a very big bar, mm-hmm. and they're they're peanut butter, and they're very tasty. But have you ever looked at how many calories are in these tiny little bars? No, oh. is it like insane? They're about three hundred and seventy calories. Oh, that's a lunch for these little these little little it's rectangles. Space food almost. Yeah, and it's because it's because peanut butter. Peanut butter right, is very yeah. very rich. We also have someone on staff who eats 
too much calories and too much sweets, but doesn't show any problems with it. Chris Damaris. <laughs> how many perfect bars could we get Chris to eat yeah. <laughs> in one go? He, until like how many power bar how many perfect bars until like, Chris does he like has run to stop? all night? Like how no. I mean like, well the thing is he runs everywhere he goes. Yeah. Huh? Oh, he, he does he, run. He, he, he does runs run everywhere. everywhere Chris vibrates it's at a frequency. He does run see here's the thing. And here's the th- I, I want to be really clear. When we say Chris runs everywhere he goes, we don't mean Chris takes a run or a jog like no. you or I would. We mean that when Chris has to go from one place to the other, it's like this. Do you remember that kid he in high school he with the backpack? It's more of a lean to it. It's very weird. He's got he's got big backpack kid energy. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Oh, it's, that's it's, pretty good. It's, it's, it's closer Naruto. to a Naruto. It is, it, is, it is a pretty close Naruto thing. Um, you're talking about calorically dense bars, and I really like that idea. I had... Somebody send me this in for Face Jam, but we've already done this kind of food. Snack this is back. a snack. Um, this is a First Strike Nutritious Energy Bar. Um, I, I don't know anything about this. Or sheet of paper. It's, um, this one's cranberry. This one's chocolate flavor. <laughs> this one's apple cinnamon flavor. This is, and this is simply well, peanut butter. 280. Very Simply bad. peanut butter. This was yeah, just peanut butter. Just ain't nothing in it. These um, are San Antonio. These are the things you get at like yeah. at like uh, Eric Cabela's. V. Loyal Jammer Eric V. Giving these out. He did Army ROTC and was talking about these. So Hi. we've done this kind of food on Face Jam before. So I figured I'd bring one? it here and see if you guys wanted to have some first strike. Okay. I just want first to strike. First strike. Nutritious first energy. Strike. Oh, first strike. Okay, so it has like the texture of like. This, this is like Bass Pro Shop Cabela's food. That's what it seems like. Feels or like a very flavor. thick like the those like uh, fruit bars. You know those like- Is it like a date bar? Like a date bar? Oh God. This thing is 260 it's calories. It's just an energy bar. What, what's the, there's like an acronym there's for like that? There's like a Rice Krispie treat. Like a Cliff Bar kind of. Oh, I could eat a whole one of those. That's Man, fucked up. Not, so all we did was talk about old people stuff and then chew into the microphones. What a great episode. What, what a Rooster podcast. podcast. Longest running hey. podcast in internet history. Really? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> what you is, just, do you know what it is? You can just like say shit I on know. the internet. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Probably some this week in tech thing or something. Mm. Something stupid like Comedy Bang Bang, something that's been running since like 2000, whatever. What is it? Jash? Yeah, something like that. Like some bim bam adjacent thing or whatever. Bim bam boom. Someone in chat yelling, do not eat those. Wow, look at the color. You will shit a block. Wait. I mean, you're going to, it's going to come out, it's going to look like That's a cool color. Like they're not really fiber dense. Cranberry? What do you think, Barbara? The first ingredient mm-hmm. is just fruit base. <laughs> All right. That's what it is. That means it's good for you. And that's peanut butter. Just, I'm sorry. No, this is just no, peanut butter. Because yeah. then there's parentheses. This is just a... Uh, and the first ingredient of fruit base uh-huh. is fructose yeah. syrup. This, yeah, there you this, go. This kind of slaps. There's oh, prune paste and date paste. And you're yeah, talking you about those. Yeah. I'm going to try thing. this one. This one's, yeah, this one's apple cinnamon. I'm going to give this one a shot real quick. Ooh, chocolate Ooh, break chocolate it off flavor. Chunk of the apple cinnamon. Yeah, I got you, baby. This Thank does you. not look appetizing. Can I get like, yours? Is a weird color. Look at this one. It's crazy. Close up. This one. That looks, looks like it's the color of what your hair will be next. This tastes like this a pumpkin is. This bar. is. This is like. This is junk. fucked up. This is good. I you can like see it. it from here. You don't need to do the zoom in. Thank you for it's standing apple up. Apple cinnamon. But oh, that no. does not look good. It tastes like pumpkin spice, and I'm a fucking slut for Ooh, pumpkin spice. You? Oh yeah. I'm not a big PSL boy. Don't worry, guys. We won't be eating for long. I promise. I mean, they I are don't, very chewy. Yeah, I don't personally care. So. R.I.P. Toilets and somebody in the <laughs> chat. I need more fiber. I've been having trouble getting Okay, if fiber. I'm ranking them, pumpkin spice or apple, whatever, that's number sure. one. I put Ooh. cranberry number one. I think cranberry's number two, and I think chocolate's number three. Chocolate one, cranberry two, apple three. Wow. But I'm not a PSL boy. I'm a I love chocolate. Thank Ch- you so much, Eric V., for... A snack attack that we did on the Rooster Teeth podcast. Hey. It was a Rooster Teeth snack attack. It was a Rooster Teeth snack attack. Something you had mentioned, this is going back way earlier in the podcast when we were talking about uh, crowds mm-hmm. and hosting in the crowds and like in Broadway people popping up in the crowds. This was so funny at the RT podcast this past Friday when mm-hmm. we did it live at the theater. The backstage area was completely closed down, mm-hmm. I think for like renovations. So the green room for us was upstairs. So to get on stage... We had to go down to the main floor and walk past the entire theater of yep, people yeah. to get to the stage. And so we were talking about like, like how from a side entrance on the floor. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like like so no, like rows. The, you know stateside, right? The theater. The, yeah. Our green room was in the lobby, upstairs by the bathrooms. There's like a green room. Oh. In order to get to the stage, you have to go downstairs, down through the lobby, and then down into the theater to just where wherever everyone's sitting entrance. to go 
right. down to the stage. So there was no stage no. entrance. No. And so we were talking about like how we want to get on stage and mm -hmm. stuff like that. If they should just announce us. Obviously, and then... Naruto run would have been the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> we did have Chris with us. Mm -hmm. But like announcing us and then coming in from the back of yep. the theater and coming up onto the stage. And we were like, oh, that makes sense. Because otherwise we'd be walking, have to go right behind the curtain on stage yes. and then wait to be announced. But people would have already seen us mm -hmm. by then. And Eric was like, no. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to do that. <laughs> because so what do you do? I just, you're, the face you made <laughs> made me fucking crack up. He was like, well, if we announce you from the back and everyone knows you're coming in from the back, everyone will be like this. <laughs> That's what will happen. Right. And that sucks. So what so, do you do? So we walked everyone to the front and people started cheering. And I said, stop. <laughs> Save it. And then everyone stopped. And he then went, we not yet. Down. Yep. And then everyone went backstage. And then we had hidden surprises and fun things backstage. That were that was a fun show. And uh, then I played the theme song, and uh, the cast went out on stage. And then we had guests appear. Carrie did close up magic. He did. Chris was a donkey. Gus cut another cake. Yep. Chris was a donkey. Uh, Drew had Crystal Pepsi. I you set. I feel like you set you set me up. Right? What do you mean? You, you're the one who set me up. I don't know what you're talking about. Everybody was backstage like, oh, yeah, Eric told us to get... No, they kept saying, somebody told us to get props. And I was like, props? Well, because first of all, I got invited, which I was like, this is a joke. There's no way I got invited to be on a live show. The whole time, I, this is... Listen to all of this and understand that none of this happened. This is just Drew. Right. Yeah, I know Drew. I yeah. know, yeah. Okay, <laughs> I know Drew. But the me first, and Drew, what, what do you... What do you we're, we're fellow soft boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for boys. Yeah. 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 So that's what I mean. Drew, I thought, Drew and I connect. I thought I was going to get pranked. I understand that. And then I understand where you're going. Like, I'm, I'm there for a guest spot. I'm going to get pied, and then I'll see you later. Yeah. And I'll get covered in pickles. And that was I'll go our home. second option. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then I was like, okay, so I'm ready to be whatever. And then I, I get backstage, and everybody's like, oh, Eric's like, there's the box of props. And I'm going to guess in real time what oh. happened was Eric said, there's the box of props. And everybody else who's on the show mm. was like, oh, I know how to do props, and then grab some props. And then I don't know how to do props. And uh -huh. so I thought there was some giant conspiracy about like Eric prepped everybody on something, and I was the only one who didn't get it. Obviously. Uh, and so then I just came out, well, uh, I think somebody backstage was like, I guess you can take out forks. And I was like, what are we going to do with forks? And then by that time, the cake had already come and gone. It was a whole thing. And then I come and there's out. There's a bunch of people you gave cake to who didn't have a fork because you didn't have enough of them. Yeah, I heard you say forks. And so, like, somebody <laughs> from marketing came fork. back and, like, handed me a fork. And I was like, cool, I'll take the forks, I guess. And then I come out on stage. And the first thing you said to me was, why do you have forks? I, was like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Drew brought Crystal Pepsi. Crystal Pepsi, Pepsi yeah. It was Brian, but Brian was like, Eric told me to bring these, uh -huh. and he had two of them, and, he, and then uh -huh. had, you were running behind, so you're like, hey, both of you are going to go out, and I was like, I'm taking a crystal pet. There you go. The Chris, I, I figured it out. The Chris has a donkey bit. You yeah. got to be there live. I'm sure we, we posted some oh pictures, but. God. I have a video of my perspective of it. Barbara but. laughed so hard, she fell out of her chair, and then was on the ground as Chris sat on the love seat in the full donkey costume like this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like a fetish video. Yeah. It was so bizarre. My favorite part of, of that was when he went to adjust his helmet while holding a full can of beer. <laughs> he spilled it everywhere. He went to go like this to adjust the ha the head part. And he just like took and the, 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 right. and the whole audience went, no! <laughs> he he I, I'm, is perfect. Like, in every way. Yep. I have to, I feel like I need to do this more often in our content. I have to express my genuine concern for Chris. <laughs> Because while everyone else gets to laugh at what he's doing, uh -huh. I'm his I'm his boss and friend. Mm -hmm. um, like even just today, we practiced a uh, a game. We're gonna do a oh this is probably I didn't mean to plug something, but next hey, Tuesday go? uh -huh. we're gonna do our first. Tales of Tinky Dragon right. live show. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna do it's kinda like a little bit like fuck face break shit and that kind of thing. Yeah, and yeah. so we're gonna play an RPG game, not D and D. We're gonna do a, a, a honey heist. It's like our spinoff series for Tales yeah. from the Stinky Dragon. We want to do stuff live you're and like this was bears a, or something. Yeah, it's your your bears and you're doing a heist to steal some honey. It's a yeah. one page RPG. Um, and while we were practicing this, multiple times in a row in separate sentences, Chris doesn't know the word he's gonna say, and so he makes up words <laughs> that sound <laughs> like the word right. he meant to yeah. look for. Uh -huh. That. <laughs> To the, I think the layman, oh, that's funny. To me, I'm like, is he having a stroke? <laughs> yeah. Is he okay? Did he do get enough rest? Do you have an example rest? of a word? What did he do today? He's, oh, 
uh, uh, Witched Witch of the East. Witched Witch. Witched Witch. Witched Witch. Witched Witch. And there was something before that. There, too, that that was that the second one, <laughs> which is what alarmed me that it happened like five minutes later where we were talking about he vibrates and just constantly runs everywhere. Right. His brain's doing that, too, and doesn't stop to think of the full sentence. I, it just goes, we'll figure it out as you say it. And then he doesn't figure it out. And he just says words. I feel like he's learned that it's faster if he just gets through it instead of holding everyone up by going, uh, so he'll go, which, <laughs> which, which, which. You, you get I a double, no you get a double joke. <laughs> but that's the thing. See, here's the problem. I'm going to, I'm going to also, I'm going to say, here's the, 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 fur, the, the further enigma that is Chris, mm. that in those recordings, like Tales and Sneaky Dragon and mm. that kind of stuff, Chris actually, I don't know if this comes through in the edit, but Chris doesn't really chime in a lot. Um, and that doesn't do a lot of the chatter when we're doing these things. Like he's very, he thinks through what, you know, like gum gum is going to say. <laughs> Here's the problem though, is that he's, that means that Chris is thinking through these things. And then right. when he chimes, pipes in, he still gets the words wrong. <laughs> So he's quiet, and it seems like he's really thinking through picking when he's going to be funny, but then he just still fucks it up. <laughs> thrilling. That's thrilling to me. I love that. It's, it's a, it's so a good. joy. Let me I tell you. I can't wait watch. to see him be a bear. I can't wait. <laughs> We're all going to be bears. That sounds like a treat. That's, yeah. Drew's not involved in the bear being thing. It just seems like that's a fit. I mean, I, I got big bear energy. <laughs> you do have big bear energy. <laughs> it's, I'm fine with that. Yeah. The... The whole thing, like, it, we kept talking, like, through the, the Honey Heist thing and talking about bears and everything. I'm <laughs> just like, this is just sounding like porn. Well, that'll be fun. What time's that at? Do you know? Four o'clock. Four, Four to six on Tuesday, April 12th, uh, live on RTTV. And uh, we'll have actually some brand new exclusive merch that we're going to release during oh, the stream. I'm so we're excited very excited for about one of them. The mug. Slash sweater. Sweater, slash yeah. Shirt. We got some, we had, we, we got it's some. a mug sweater shirt? Whoa. <laughs> it's a design. What the fuck? They're desi a design, actually, that a community member made uh -huh. that oh, sick. we loved so much that we contacted we them about. We stole it. Putting it on merch. Oh, that's cool. And it's it's the same design that's on a, a crew neck sweater, the same design that's on a t-shirt, and the same design that's on a mug. But we'll have a few things that we'll be, we'll be announcing for some fun new Sneaky Dragon merch. But then we'll also get to be playing a game. That's cool. Yeah. Should um, be really fun. I feel like we've been doing like new live stuff and then doing the live show on Friday and everything. Which, by the way, uh, Cameron just reminded me that the moment of Chris in a donkey and everything from that mm -hmm. podcast is going to be in the docu series because they were uh, oh that's right uh, they were yes. filming. Oh, nice. and, there was a yeah, covering everything. So there's a Face Jam documentary thing, and so you'll get a similar one for this, and and I think probably a feature like a longer one for, for the AH live moment. one. And, yeah, they've and, been and, and, and like Fun House. They did one for Fun House, and so all that stuff. Uh, I'm very excited for RTX now. Yes. I, like, I got excited for RTX when we did the road trip in October. It's it like that like, was when I was like, oh, <laughs> I, re I remember. I yeah. remember. You're doing it, I, Peter. <laughs> yeah. I love. I'm. I'm. I try to actually listen to our our content here at Rooster Teeth because I actually like a lot You're of our a shows. Maniac. We we. I, I I am a maniac, but also like. I really enjoy a lot, like the the new Ship Hits the Fan. Awesome is, show. Ship oh, Hits the Fan awesome is so device. good. I'm almost through uh, 30 Morbid Minutes first episode. That oh, very cool. Good. 30 and, Morbid Minutes from Jessica Vasami and uh -huh. Elise Willems. Uh -huh. And, I, and, I, and I've, I'm not caught up on Face Jam, but I go back and I still listen to Face Jam because I think mm -hmm. Face Jam is actually an extremely well-made disaster. It's a disaster. Um, um, and I, I, I do remember recently getting through the, like the, the what was the, uh, Voodoo Ranger. Yeah. The, that, that, that road trip and i love the, the character of drew that was uh, so mentioned good. throughout this whole thing what did they call you in it no it just like it was just me it was just me but it was a version of me <laughs> i mean it was me yeah, like, it, is it wasn't you, but it's you through the lens of face jam michael yeah and 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 the whatever weird energy you guys had on your road trip yeah and it was <laughs> it's i would have loved to have been there to be like on team drew to help oh, yeah. through through it's through <laughs> There was one night we went to the Big Texan, okay. and the whole crew, we all got the big steak, <laughs> and the whole, yes, that and like, one. I'm sitting there and like directing everybody, and I was like, hey, this will be a real, in my head, I was like, this is going to be a real treat for everybody, because it's a big steak place, we're going to take the crew out for a nice steak dinner. We couldn't, we couldn't shoot in the location, we had to shoot out in the parking lot, and so at one point I look around, and the whole crew has set up their cameras, and is sitting on the ground of a parking lot, <laughs> eating steak. They're eating they, it outside? Outside, on the ground, and they keep breaking their knives and forks, because the steak's not good, and so they're just like, and so I'm just like, and quietly crying, like screaming inside, and then listening to Michael be like, hey Drew, we need butter, and it's like, yeah. you know what Michael, you go fuck yourself, yeah. <laughs> that guy right there is eating on the ground. Like, we just, it, it ended, like we, we had shot all of this, eating like the 72 ounce 
mistake and everything where Nick is like a vampire and that he th he's like gaunt and like not doing well. And then by the end, he's eaten the steak and like he feels better. It's a very weird episode. So it ends. And then Michael goes, so why did you guys eat at this restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> and then it was what it was. I mean, you guys could I mean, you didn't have to eat here. You could eat anywhere. You guys this didn't have to the eat content. at the steak. Yeah, you guys didn't have to eat the steak restaurant. And it, we had to eat the steak restaurant because we had to film it. But I had been on the phone with like production being like, no, no, it'll be fun. Like, it's an extra expense, but like the boys would deserve it. And then like yeah, yeah. it was just bad. It was big dog bad, shit. Big oh. bad meat. It was definitely not it was definitely not Turner's bison. <laughs> they could have like, damn sure. wait and then get a table later. Right. No, right. we could have done that or gone anywhere. Or, else. or, gone, or, or gone, gone anywhere else. Yeah. Or like gone to bed. Yeah, wealth yeah, of like options. That was, that was, yeah, that was, the options were like, yeah. So I have a question about Nick. Uh-huh. Which I, I know Nick. Don't we all? Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> But I'm learning something through the, this, the podcast mm -hmm. that, like, is Nick, like, a voracious eater? He's a... Like, just a bottomless... He's, like, a... He's a little freak. <laughs> because, uh, because Nick actually is, like... <laughs> The Nick I know uh -huh, is sure. actually the story of like the Nick who was at one point a little more overweight and did yes. a really, really yep. amazing weight loss journey. Yep. And also literally the nicest person oh, in the yes. world. Uh -huh. Sweetest man ever. He uh but has it just turned into he's just an he's just an, an eater at these shoes? This is the time when he gets to go back into freak mode. Okay, so this is this is Got fat it. Nick. Yeah. Like Be expressing himself. Because the rest of the time he's like eating healthy and okay. doing his best he has the kid and he's like taking care of himself and he's doing great because he because nope. he hasn't put nope none no. doing because face gym hasn't affected this at all not no. at all it has it has others of us but to hear, however what, what was the episode Nick. i was listening to not you guys Nick. were somewhere and you guys were making fun of the fact that you like turned away and his food was gone it happens john every single time <laughs> where we will eat we will eat and then we'll go jordan will be the first one to finish well not but finish he'll be like the first one a fast to be food done thing, right like it's, yes. no, it's but, not but like see, no 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 because they will, go to restaurants and get like full full on like big meals also an okay, so it's not just a burger or no something. no uh uh jordan will be the first one done in the way where he goes i'm finished with this <laughs> and i no longer wish to consume it <laughs> me and michael will eat it and then go like oh man i'm full i don't want to eat anymore Nick will eat all of his food so fast. It's like you blink and it's gone. And then he goes, oh, why did I eat the whole thing? Woo, fries. And then, he, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he's doing that. And it's just like. I see me and Nick have something in common. We, every time we, and you can ask Michael about it. Every time we do an episode, Nick's like, this time I'm not going to eat the whole thing. <laughs> and Michael just goes, I don't know why you tell yourself that. It's a lie. Every time. Yeah. Every time it's a lie that you're going to do that. He is such a great member of that show because he's just a guy that goes woo and then like makes a noise and laughs in the background and you can't see it's not a video podcast but you can't see him he'll put the monkey mask on when he has like something to say then he's like behind the board he'll put the monkey mask on and then he'll like point a gun <laughs> and it's like this is the fucking most unhinged does he wear the mask during the recording not scene? all the time okay. only when he has something to contribute like that then he's in. Then he's in freak mode. Yeah, he's yeah. In, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's what we discovered on the on the road trip was mm -hmm. like the monkey had its own. Yes, had its own <laughs> agenda and its own. Like <laughs> Nick, <laughs> Nick and the monkey the are monkey two different people. Hundred percent. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm actually gonna say something, and I'm gonna uh -huh. say it, and, and I actually want to make sure this isn't me besmirging any uh -huh. people group, but I'm, I'm realizing the way you're talking about how he's acting with the monkey mask is how I've heard legitimate furries talk about so yeah why mascots the same way why they like the suit he used to be the rat at chuck e cheese he used to work Whoa, at chuck e cheese what? when he was like 16 uh, and so he picked up he picked up on that like mascot thing a long time but you can't talk as the fucking rat you gotta go ooh, uh, you have to whatever. be very expressive with your Ex body yeah. so he michael bought him this mask because originally, Michael was going to buy him a different animal mask that he was going to have to wear every time. Because Michael said, the joke to me is he goes, sorry, dear, I have to go to work. And then grab all these <laughs> animal masks. <laughs> but then the monkey thing happened. And he, the uh, uh, like, jammers picked up on it so fast where they're just like, this guy loves sauce and he's a monkey. He's the sauce monkey. Sauce yeah. And we went fucking And that perfect. is the mascot right. And so now that's, that's our little Caesars pizza pizza guy, right? Like sure. He's like the mascot of the show. But that was like the original bit. Now Nick is like outfitted. He has like a little hat. He has like a jacket. He had a little bow staff where you hit a button and it pops He's out. He's like a magician. Like, yes, it was really crazy. But you're right. He has that ability to like go into like mascot mode really fast. Hold and it's up. very good. Someone just said, don't look at Nick's TikTok. Why? Oh. Uh-oh. That's all, cool. All thirst traps. 
What, Hell yeah. What is this it's still shredded. It's just, it's just <laughs> it's the monkey butt pest. cheeks as far as the eye can see. <laughs> but he's he's great. He's a he's he's really cool and he's very good at what he does. And he has like a whole audio department that lets us do these fucking audio podcasts that he, we're doing now. And you know, Hurry he's up. one of the people like it's good talk about go back to people pleasing mm. and not wanting to bother people and that kind of thing. That's me constantly not trying to bother people. But having choices. to do my job. Um Nick is on the sh- on that short list of people mm-hmm. that I really appreciate. Like, yeah, how genuine I know he wants to help, mm-hmm. and he wants to do his best to like you know assist these productions yeah. you keep talking about that we have to do. And there, there's there, it, I say short list. There's a good group of amount of people here that like I really appreciate those people. Actually, the majority of them are actually in this fucking room <laughs> right now. There are people that are like been really helpful, especially even recently. You know, filming. A lot of our stuff we've mm-hmm. been being in stuff. Like if you saw recently, one of our TikToks that did really well was Kayla running down these <laughs> halls a, as a, a murderer runs after. In our show, uh, Improv Ambush. In, in, oh, yeah, Improv yeah. Ambush. Yeah. And uh, on behind the scenes and in front of the camera was Cody. Cody's the murderer in that mm. thing. and he's just, Oh, really? Oh, yeah. you did a very good job. Yeah. He's got the murder. I feel like Cody has played the murderer in a number of our <laughs> He has. <laughs> well, he's... He- He's got a great Cody you tell has a great me, Cody. Uh, he has a great character actor mm-hmm. body. Yeah. Like I have, a, I have actually have a lot of friends from you know you know theater and that kind of thing who Theatre. like they have a very you have a very like Doug, expressive Doug body. Jo- Doug Jones energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I, uh, uh, I've actually an, uh, did did anybody see the um, the uh, what was the X Men movie that was the uh, the last one that was X Men Three. The X-Men Last three. stand. No, it was the ones about the kids. I'm the Pocket juggernaut, ones. bitch. Uh, uh, new Mutants. New Mutants. New Mutants. No, There's close. a bad guy in Never New Mutants <laughs> who's this, like, Slender Man-looking kind of character uh-huh. that is, like, haunting uh, 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 Colossus's sister, Magic. And <laughs> What a fucking stupid name. <laughs> what a mouthful <laughs> of Marvel lore. <laughs> that yeah. just, like... Hi, just, like, I'm just, Magic. I just immediately... It's with a K. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> yeah, duh. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! But you won't you won't guess what her superpower is. Is it magic? No, nope, Ele- it's not electricity. Actually. Is it up close magic? She, it's <laughs> yeah. just she, in. she wears a fedora. She, yeah. <laughs> she teleports and has like this like Final Fantasy Buster Sword made from her soul. This sucks. Hell from yeah. her Hell soul. Yeah. Magic. yeah, from her soul. It's made from her soul. All right, whatever. So what about this? There is a character in Cody's, that movie. Cody's in the movie. That's a bad guy. <laughs> That is like he's my buddy's in it because he has this he's he's a dancer and has he's very very long and lengthy Especially beautiful with his body. body and he's that character because they need those kinds of people to be character. He actors. plays the sword. He plays the sword. <laughs> he plays the sword. <laughs> you know, she pulls the out tree. the sword it's just a to man. fight it's a the. Man. Da- <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. And he's just saying the sound effects, clang clang. Yeah. If that happened, magic would be my favorite X Men. <laughs> <laughs> What's Magic's power? She has a man that comes out Whoa. as her soul. <laughs> I'm Cody. <laughs> ah. Oh ah, shit, that's fucking awesome. Uh, oh, that's so funny. Uh, <laughs> I, I would now. Now, okay, so we need the milk show, and then we have, <laughs> we have the show where John explains X Men characters to we also, Eric. We also anyway. have a show where uh, Kayla explains the Bible. That's, oh, that's man. Another she is, that we talked she about. Dude, Wait, boy. what? If, if, wow. I get, if I get drunk, I'm good. I'm good Woo. on explaining the Bible, I feel. I Kayla feel like, does uh, this thing. She's done on the podcast a couple times where she explains something from the Bible in such a understandable, hilarious way. Yeah. yeah. That I, we just have to make a whole show yeah. out of it. That's she's, funny. she's a very Bible versed. She's very good. No at, pun intended. Yeah. Well, maybe some. Maybe a little. Uh, she definitely knows that stuff inside and out, and it, I think that would be a very funny show. When you were doing that Face Jam tour uh-huh. thing, I'm a Bob, mm-hmm. and you had Drew with you. I did have Drew with me. Yeah. Uh, something I'm gonna we're we're complimenting people. Today, Get him. So okay, fine. Compliment Drew. Uh, He's not gonna be comfortable about there's, it. It's there's fine. a couple people at this oh. company. Actually, all, I would count all three of you in this bucket. Of if they are involved in something or on set for something or just like present, mm-hmm. you feel comforted. Oh, that's You're fine. like this person. Has a handle on things. This person knows what they're doing. Oh, that's good. I am not concerned. And, like, that's something that when, you know, Drew was doing Bloodfest and a bunch of stuff for us, I was mm-hmm. just like, Drew's got it. Thanks. I know He's a very, does. very responsible gentleman. Yeah. Very trustworthy, very capable, responsible. Just all, all of you guys. That's are. all I wanted from the live show on Friday, where it could just be you guys walk in and then it didn't have to be, so what is this? I can right. just go, here's what it is. Don't worry about it. Yeah. yeah. Show up. I felt that way. Yeah. Good. Yeah, you did that's a great job with that. That's all I wanted. And yeah. then Especially I went home. me being neurotic and being like, yeah. what about this? Do and, you have this? And, and then I went home and I laid down like this, Morbius style, <laughs> and then I uh, <laughs> and then I went to bed. Oh, John, John oh, wait, Morbius. hang on, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. 
Barbara, what do you think Morbius... Barbara told me she doesn't know what Morbius is. Barbara, what do you think Morbius is? Right before the podcast, we were talking about Morbius, uh -huh. and I was saying to Eric how I have no idea what this movie is. I don't know. I've never seen a single thing for it. And everyone was talking about this weekend. And uh -huh. you said, don't look anything up. Yeah. I'm going to ask you about this on the what podcast. What is... Okay. Who is Morbius? Morbius is uh -huh. a... A superhero, but uh -huh. he's evil. Okay. Kind of like Venom. Kind of like Venom, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, he wears a long black cloak. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, uh -huh. And what does he do? What's his power? Yeah, 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 yeah. What is Morby? I, if, like, what's his intention? He uh, could make himself phase through walls. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Just that. Uh, and sometimes he'll ask you if you want the blue pill or the red pill. <laughs> no. I was waiting Morpheus. for that connection. I was That's waiting close. for that connection. That's close. Oh. Okay, yeah. Like, what do you think the plot, and just so you know, I want, is, I fully you, want there it? to be spoilers when we talk about Morbius now. Hey, I Eric, don't care. I, I know John Cena. No, no, no. I got to tell you, you can't spoil it because there <laughs> doesn't make any sense. There ain't no beautiful, story to beautiful. spoil. Beautiful. Barbara, yeah. what do you think the movie Morbius is about? Like, like, don't, it's not like, oh, give me beat for beat. Just like the big picture. What does he have to overcome? Yes. That's the that's hero's a great, story. So what does he have to overcome? He's, he's a baddie, uh -huh. and then something happens in his life where all of a sudden he realizes he wants to do good. Uh-huh. Uh, and then once he does good, something bites him in the ass about it, and then he returns to being evil. Oh. And then someone he loves gets hurt, and then he goes back to being good. Oh, okay. How'd she do? I mean... I mean, what she just described was like a generic hero story. <laughs> Which yeah. is what it seems like Morbius yeah. is. <laughs> okay, um, is it a superhero movie? Yes. Yeah. It's, a, okay. yeah, it's a Marvel movie. It's, it's, it's a Marvel, it's a Marvel well, movie? It's, it's a Sony it's a Marvel. Marvel. Sony Marvel. Marvel. So you, when you said Venom, you actually were pretty connected. Because uh, oh. he also is a Spider-Man character. Morbius is a villain from Spider-Man. Uh, uh, a, like a, he's, he's an, he's an anti-hero is what I would call him. Uh-huh. I call him an evil vampire <laughs> who uh, Spider-Man fights. He's not evil. Okay, so I was pretty close. Yeah. Not just too far based off. off the name Morbius, yeah. Yeah. which I'd never heard of mm -hmm. before. My mm -hmm. favorite version of Morbius, mm -hmm. <laughs> after seeing the film, Bless you. is Sorry. now still the Spider-Man, the, the Fox yeah. Kids Spider-Man. 100%. Where in hindsight, you didn't realize we were watching as a kid, but now you realize like they couldn't mention or show blood. Yeah. Right. And so they gave him suckers on his hands. <laughs> what? Like like five yeah. suckers. And said he thri he survives off of plasma because uh -huh. they couldn't even say blood. blood. And so he's going up to people and he's just like like sucking them. <laughs> like on their neck still, he was still taking their neck plasma. And that's what they did in the Weird. cartoon. So he's he is a villain. Uh, yeah. He But does he he's, turn no, good? He's um he was a doctor who was trying to like do good yeah. and in that process, you know, bad experiment turns him into course, a living course. vampire. Classes, and now style. he's like torn between he's a living vampire. you know, being a living vampire cuz he's not like an actual legitimate vampire. He's is this a vampire? turned to it. Yes. yes, it is. Um but <laughs> did not expect that. <laughs> yeah, it's a vampire. Um, you didn't even know that about Morbius? I knew I not a single thing. Awesome. Other than people were joking about seeing it. I, who's the villain? Like who's the antagonist? Morbius. <laughs> also Morbius. Also Morbius. Um, it's there, a. It's, there's another vampire man. Well, I don't want to spoil. Who it. No, no. Gives a no. shit. Spoil it. It's who's, Morbius. Um, no, because then the problem is, is John's gonna get shit for it. I don't want to give spoil me it. shit for it. Is I it, don't but, care. Okay, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Because I I think I could say it, but I don't watch trailers. Is it Spider Man? No, it's not. <laughs> is it Doctor Who? <laughs> no. Uh, it's uh, one of the Doctor Who's. Probably Doctor It's Matt Up? Smith. I don't know who that is. Is it Doctor Who? It's a Doctor, Doctor Who. Who. Yeah. It's a Doctor Who. I, that's got to be the trailer. The it's got to be in the trailer. Like the no, he got he, cheekbones. Yeah, the real, real gaunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Looks like uh, Doug Jones or Cody. Cody. <laughs> <laughs> Cody's like, leave me alone. Cody, are you trying to stop Morbius? <laughs> Cody's the villain. No, I the serial killer. He's just the sword again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jared Leto. The reason I want to talk about Morbius is You want to talk about Jared Leto. More, the worst man. Uh, the <laughs> more news came out today that um, he had more method acting on the set of Morbius. Oh, absolutely. Where he was like method acting. Is like Jared he Leto was in it? disabled. Jared Leto is Morbius. <laughs> <laughs> Not he's, what I was picturing. He's Morbius. <laughs> Not what I was picturing yeah. at all. Um, I guess a vampire. That makes sense. Yeah. He was like method acting. Like he had like the. 
like the Morbius disease or something. The cru- he would walk around on crutches all the time. So yeah, and then oh the blood disease. and then that uh, <clears throat> shot. I don't know. This might be shocking. The movie fucking sucked. What? But but he was delaying production for forty minutes at a time to go to the bathroom, and so finally the director was like, "Can you just?" Get in a wheelchair and we'll have a PA push you to the shitter so that you can use the restroom. And Why like, was it taking him yeah, so long? Because he, he, would, he, he wouldn't break method, character. Like he on would just the stay crutches. in the crutches or he just wouldn't break character at all. Oh, I so like that he, he does method acting yeah. for dog shit. That's so to, cool. To, like, yeah, to, go, to go all the way to I the have method. to be in the mind right. of more Morbius. 18% on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm, I am Morbius! I, I, I just want to see yeah. it now. Yeah. For, I, I actually... It's this generation's Geely. It wasn't. Oh, I like that. It wasn't. I feel like Geely is this generation's. Oh, <laughs> sure, fine. Okay, fine. <laughs> I, I actually, I, I don't want to say this, but mm-hmm. if I'm being honest, it wasn't <laughs> that bad. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I thought Carnage was way worse. Yeah, oh, Carnage yeah, I can was, see that. was terrible. It was a train wreck. Um, um, sorry, I, I, mean, I don't mean I should not talk like that. Some people might like, and I don't like to, to shit on people's. I do. So the only reason <laughs> that I care about this thing is because my friend told me about the Discord, the official Morbius Discord. <laughs> do you know about oh, this? Oh no, I don't There's know about the official, official Morbius, Morbius Discord, Discord. And you have to wait every ten <clears throat> minutes to post, and you have to gain Morbius levels in order to like post gifts you have to be level 10 you have to be a level level 10 fucking more pound in order to post gifts and then now the movie sucks so now all the people in the discord are like we're memeing the fuck out of this thing so they have started mount up not just mount up for morbius we are uh, (laughs) mounting the morbolution which is the revolution involving morbius yeah here's the problem we the the people (laughs) (laughs) here's the problem is that (laughs) it it is it is most likely on track Uh to being a financial success well yeah because people are gonna go see it they're gonna hate see it yeah yeah yeah, well it's even like it was even shot pretty cheaply it was only a like a seventy-five million dollar budget. Nothing, was it there's really? Nothing else in the theater. Wow. Only a seventy-five million. What are you for for, about? A, for, a, for a, like a superhero right, movie, that's the, very the cheap. The weekend that like it a, premiered, yeah. there was nothing else in the theater. So we have to make ambulance number one. <clears throat> I'm only seeing oh, ambulance in D box. Oh, we're me and me and Tim G are seeing uh, ambulance in 4DX because he said, "Bro, you fuck with the ambulance," and you said, "You know I do," and then he said. These are two brothers bonded in the wages of war. They're back home, and you know they got to get paid. Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> and I said, How does he always have something? It's, he's, got it, he's got it ready. Let's, let's do it. Does he just have a bank of these? I don't know. Absolutely. So, so vast that he just pulls them out. This is Michael Bay's next project. Looks like a Michael Bay movie from 2004. It, it looks what? wild. Not Ambulance. What's the one he, after that? No, Ambulance. Oh, it, Ambulance. It, it, it looks like a 2004 movie. Oh, yeah. Movie. It looks fucking nuts. Yeah. Oh, and then there's an interview with Michael Bay where he's like, Ah, some of the shots suck. <laughs> so I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> that he's awesome. Yeah. The VFX. He says there's like, some yeah, VFX. Man, it I don't sucks. Really like him. Now, uh, everything, everywhere, all the time. That looks awesome. Uh, oh, I that really looks like want a great. Yeah. I got it to see good. it opening night of South by. How was it? Uh, I'm I'm telling you nothing. I yeah, would okay. recommend everybody everybody phenomenal. in your friend should well, go see it. I got out of uh, it, and the it's one of those movies you get out. You're like. How do you pitch this? I, film? I, will, I will tell you two things about that movie that, uh, as a filmmaker, made me uh, cry a lot. Uh, the first thing was they listed all the PAs first before wow. the cast. Oh, that's fun. Like, not executive producer, not Jamie Lee Curtis. Wow. It was, here are our production assistants, here's the cast. The second thing was, and the movie, again, these are the guys who did the turn down for what music videos mm-hmm. was Army Man. They're very VFX oriented dudes. Uh, that movie is insane with its visual effects. Yeah, I've heard. Had seven visual effects artists on it. That's it. That's crazy. That's it. As and opposed the, to probably hundreds on Hundreds and thousands of people on other movies. On Just, ambulance. S- yeah, exactly. <laughs> seven seven of their good friends from college who did their music videos with them who were just like, hey, can you come cool play with us? Fuck. Yeah. Just the coolest. That's very cool. Oh, yep. So excited for everybody to see it. If you, this isn't like the, the selling point of the film, but it, there's, there because there's so many aspects the, the, the film is an amalgamation of genres mm. and which is in line with the whole multiverse kind of element of it but it evoked old jackie chan films yeah sure t- oh, to down, down to the most minute detail of what makes jackie chan films yeah. Michelle, and sequences, yeah, yeah. like d- fantastic mm-hmm. it was it, like just there's moments like that where it takes you into these genres and you're just like this is amazing yeah she's like she's fantastic like Kung Fu actor, like it's well, the, Hong the, Kong, the, 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 impeccable. The supporting Hong Kong actor, action. the, the uh, guy who's her husband. Yeah, who was the guy in the Goonies? I can't remember. He is 
amazing. And short that's round cool. in the uh, in oh, really? Temple of Doom. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so he's like back, and like I, all the performances are amazing. The the whole thing, the fight sequence with the fanny pack is yeah. Nuts. He has this most disarming like like uh, timid voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like his voice is very is high pitch and it's very sweet. And then, but he can turn it because he's like he, he his character turns a little bit, and it, it you like you believe him as an action star. It's fantastic. It's very cool. I really like Michelle Yeoh a lot. Where it, like, people know her from like Crouching Tiger or whatever. She but, was like, also in Shang Chi, right? Yes, and um, Which she's just for, such a. She's been around for so long doing like Hong Kong action films, yeah. mm-hmm. and, and just like as like a stunt performer, man, she's so good. She well, is that's what, so good. That's what the like the the synopsis of this film is that it is a it is a love letter to her. That's great. Like that's that, very they they made this film as a love letter and then pitched it to her, that's, saying, oh, that's "We so want cool. to do this. We yeah. should do that." No one else is going to get this. We should do that with Cynthia Rothrock. I'm just letting everyone that? know. She's another like Hong Kong like action star uh. from like the late 80s, early 90s and then was in like if you go on Amazon Prime and just search like Blood Faction, LA Cop Guns 2, yeah. like that kind of stuff. She's just like in all of those and you go, she's fucking incredible. So Cynthia Cynthia Rothrock you're next. We got to, let's make her do movies. Okay. Also, yeah. P- I saw people in chat asking what movie we were talking about. Everything, everywhere, all of the time. All at once. All at once. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Everything, I, ca- everywhere, I kept saying it wrong as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's in theaters now. It looks really good. It's Until an Ambulance film. comes out. What, 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 uh, on the same level of Barbara with Morbius, mm-hmm. what's Ambulance? I don't know what Ambulance why is. Don't other, than it? other, why than don't other than it's a, other than it's a Michael Bay film right. with Jake Gyllenhaal and uh, Elliot Page is in it. I have no idea. No. What, why don't you explain it to us? Yeah, go ahead. I'd, What's Ambulance about? If it's a Michael Bay film, then huh? it's some glorification of huh? of uh, some sort of ambulance driver who's probably called to do something okay. above and beyond what a normal ambulance driver has to do. Okay. Like, and he probably used to be in the military, but now he's ambulance driver. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so then he gets put in a situation where he's got to use military stuff. Okay. Am I That's remotely close? close. Uh, I actually yeah. don't know either. Uh, uh, I'm going to guess. Uh-huh. My guess is Jake Gyllenhaal. Yes. Is an ambulance man. Okay. He like is the uh, the driver. Yes. And then there's another actor who will go like, oh yeah, that guy. He'll be the guy in the back of the ambulance. Uh-huh. And then a giant earthquake hits L.A. Whoa. And they're having to be ambulance boys throughout the city as they. I mean, like, yeah, that's what I fix. It's, it's the, pretty good. The big one hits. Could I wow. get my theory? Yeah, absolutely, Barbara. Please. We're gonna give three theories here, and then we'll find out who's Love right when the ambulance it. actually Great. comes out. Mm-hmm. My theory is Jake Gyllenhaal. Is the voice of the ambulance, <laughs> and it's a surprise sequel to Cars. This wow. is Cars oh, Four. Wow. Cars ambulance. Four Ambulance. Yeah, they're That's hiding the first part of good. the title. I'm looking it up. Okay. Well, uh, am I right? Jake Gyllenhaal and his friend are uh, guys who were in the army and then came back. And Jake Gyllenhaal is a, I guess you would say a thief. They would do like thief things, and then this guy's trying to go straight. But, bro, they are brothers bonded by the wages of war. Stop they're it. back home, and you <laughs> know they got to get paid. So. They go to rob a bank, heat style, and oh. then they steal, there's like, oh, it goes wrong, and somebody shoots a cop, and whatever, and then it's like, oh, fuck, now we're wanted, wanted, wanted. Steal an ambulance who is, the driver's like a Victoria's Secret model, um, but she's an ambulance driver, and then they gotcha. are trying to like save a cop that's like in the back, of the, but then all the LAPD. Oh, it's like the Michael Bay film, on. the Victoria's yeah. Secret model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. And, then, and then all the shots look like this. Yeah. Right. It looks pretty cool. Oh, very good. How did they do Ambulance. that? Ambulance. Wait, did you prepare that? that? I got that. Do we ha- have we always had that? Wait, does it? Yes. Do, is it is it robotic? Can it pan does around? Does it turn? Yeah. Wait, yeah, do I don't. Me. I don't know if we have the control. Oh, hey! No. Oh, Whoa! Ambulance. God. I don't like. Okay, that, now dude. do John. Nice. I don't, I don't like that. Dude. <laughs> Look, now do me. You can, see, you can see my faded roots. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So yeah, we have that. Now me. But you gotta find it, Barb. You have to find it. Whoa! Can you find it, Barb? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that'll do it for the podcast tonight. Thank you. Well, you keep looking at it. Thank you, Barbara. I'll end it. You keep doing that. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> we, ho- <laughs> we hope you guys have a great night and you join us uh, for RTX, rtxevent.com. Survive Block Island. Survive Block Island. Oh, it's oh, this yeah. week. It premieres. It premieres this Thursday, April 7th. And if you want to hear more about it, check out the post show where we're going to talk all about Survive Block Island. Okay, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. Barbara, wave. Bye. Keep waving.